So let's say we're going to be populating a spreadsheet, and there's a number of ways to populate the spreadsheet. So we're going to be looking at both bound and standalone options. And then once we've selected the sheet object, how we can add, how we can select the range, and then set the value. And if we want to set multiple values, how that's going to work, how we can have a range with multiple cells, and setting the values across all of those cells. So this is going to be an example of using a bound script in order to update some cell content. So if we want to update the content in A1, what we can do with the script, so this is a bound script to this spreadsheet object. So let's go ahead and we're going to create our function and we'll just call it updater1. And so within this function, first thing that we want to do is we want to select the sheet object. And because this is a bound script, we can use the spreadsheet app and then get the active sheet object, which returns the object back as a sheet. So let's take a look at what we've got for sheet within the logger log. We're in the updater function, and there we've got the sheet object. Let's also try the same thing within a standalone application. So we'll copy and paste the code in there. And here we're not able to use an active sheet because there's no active sheet. So we have to actually open by, there's a number of options here, and typically my preference is to open by ID. And the reason is that the ID is one of the easiest ways to open it. You can also open it by URL. In order to get the ID of the spreadsheet, each spreadsheet, each file within Google Sheets and Workspace will have its own ID. And you can get the ID by going opening up the document, going to the web URL, and it's going to be this long string of characters up here at the top. So go ahead and grab that, paste that in. So this will give you the ID of the sheet. And this is opening up the spreadsheet. And when we run this, you're going to see that we need to accept permissions because we haven't accepted permissions yet for that. So go through the permissions as it's used in the spreadsheet object in order to access and we see that within the info, we've got spreadsheet. We're here, we've got the sheet. So it's actually accessed the sheet object, the first one within the spreadsheet. And here we're grabbing the spreadsheet itself. So we need to take one more step further and we need to open the sheet. And there's a number of ways to select the sheet itself at the active sheet. We can also go down through all of the different methods that are available to us. And there's one here at the bottom, sheet by name. So you can select that one and that will allow us to select an individual sheet. And in this case, the sheet is called sheet 12. So you can enter in the name as a string value. And then when you run it, you're going to be producing a sheet just as we did within the bound script. So now it's referencing those same sheet objects. And in order to make updates to the sheet content, we select the sheet object, and then we do the get, and we need to select a range that we want to use for the sheet. For range, there's a number of options. The simplest one is to use the notation. So I'm going to use the A1. And if you do need to use the range in other statements, you can always refer to it as an object. So we can refer to the range and then we can get the range once again and we can set a value of the range. And then this value can be whatever we have for a string value. So let's create a value variable. And this is gonna make it a little bit easier when we're writing the statement or we're setting the value that we can see this is the value that we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna just set the value of my name and it's expecting a string value. And let's save that and we're gonna run that. And we see that that name gets deposited into the first A1 location within the sheet. Let's copy that and we'll go over to the second one we're using the standalone. And this time we'll do the A2 and then we'll do a two after my name so that we can distinguish between the two functions. So there we've got the second one that we're inserting. So with the range, you also have a number of options where you're getting the range. So the range itself can be set numerically as well. 
So we can set it by its row and its column. And we can also select the number of rows and the number of columns that we want to populate. So let's set this at column number four. So setting and selecting the range updates the range where we're going to populate that information. So this gives you a way to add the same value across all of the entire range. And so this is different where if we select the range, we'll call this range two, selecting the sheet object, get range. So that selects a range that we can use. And then for range two, we can set values. The difference between value and values is that this is going to be expecting an array, whereas values expects a string. So we need to have an array with the same dimensions as we do within the range itself. And now let's run the values. And we see that we still get an error there because the number doesn't match the signature in the set values. The number of rows, which is one, and the number of columns, which is two. So this is gonna match the same dimensions as the array object that we're trying to populate. And once we do that, we see that then we're able to populate that information. And this will allow us to have different values for each cell. If we have two columns, then we can separate out the second column as values and move this in to column number one. And then we'll run that script again. So now it's gonna populate over here within this range. And of course you can do the same thing where you're setting the values within the bound script. So that's the difference between the bound script where selecting the sheet and then selecting the range where you can populate data and also the set value and set values and the difference how you can set the values within a spreadsheet.